اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم Systematic Literature Review In this series, uh, we are going to focus on how to conduct a systematic literature review. Learning Outcomes By the end of this series, participants will be able to understand the purpose and importance of SLR and business research, identify key differences between SLR and traditional literature reviews, develop a, a more structured protocol for conducting on the systematic literature review, utilize relevant tools and databases for systematic searching, extract, analyze and synthesize research findings effectively, present and write up a high quality SLR for publication. Literature Reviews A literature review is an integrative summary of published research on a specific topic. Now, the literature review seeks to synthesize what is already known about the topic and sometimes explicitly state what is not known or not well understood. And this is from where you write about your gaps. This is where you identify that this is what is known about the topic. This is what is not known about the topic. And these are going to be my gaps. Maybe you work on the specific relationships that have been assessed and those that have not been assessed. Or you explain explicitly the contradictions in your existing research on particular topics. For example, you are studying corporate social responsibility and organizational performance. Now you will get that some studies have found a positive relationship between the two while others have found a negative relationship. And there are studies that found no significant relationship. Now the literature review will help you synthesize this information and will identify that there are contradictory results in existing research that can further present gaps that are available in the literature. Now, the following are the key characteristics of a literature review. It contains a clear research question problem that you are trying to answer. It is not a list describing or summarizing one piece of literature after another. It is organized into sections that present themes or identify trends, including a relevant theory related to the research question. So when writing literature reviews, you have to have a clear research question or the problem that you're trying to find an answer to. It shouldn't be a list like X noted this, Y found out this, Z stressed on this. Now you have to critically review your literature by linking the three point of views. You have to explain how one is linked to the other. And finally, it is organized into different sections. And we use relevant theories to explain the relationship between the study constructs. Now there are common literature review approaches. There is narrative review, then there is systematic review, we've got meta-analysis and bibliometric analysis. Now, as part of narrative review, what you're doing is you are summarizing broad themes with a structured methodology. For example, you're writing about the general trends in financial technology. Systematic review follows a more structured approach and the process is more synth based on synthesis. For example, you are assessing the impact of digital transformation on SMEs. So you will have a more structured approach starting with a research question followed by explanation of how one variable influences the other based on extensive search of available literature, maybe in a time frame. Most often it is within a time frame, for example, from after 2020 maybe or after 2010 or from 2001 to 20, uh, 2025. Next is meta-analysis. This uses statistical techniques to combine the results from existing research. For example, you want to find out how HR practices influence uh, or influence employee performance. Now there is maybe 100, of, 100 papers that have assessed this relationship. Now based on the results from those studies, you are going to use different statistical techniques to find 
a summary of those results or the combined results from multiple studies. Finally, bibliometric analysis, you use citation based methods to analyze the research trends. And in this, for example, you can map research on corporate social responsibility. Now, how do we conduct a literature review? Now, all reviews follow a similar process. Find and examine the existing literature reviews. Formulate a research question. Now, your systematic literature review will start from a research question. Now, you have to search for the sources. Assess the quality of your results and select your sources. Now, you can have papers from a number of sources, but it's humanly impossible to analyze, study, and then report all those papers from those different sources. So, we are going to select those papers those research articles that are peer-reviewed and are of quality. Now synthesize the important information from your sources. Now how do you do this? You read through those papers, extract relevant data and maybe use different tools or maybe put it in a table and then develop a better understanding of those results. Analyze what you found now, what is a systematic literature review? A systematic literature review, also known as evidence synthesis, because it brings together information from a range of sources to answer a specific research question. Your research question might be how and why corporate social responsibility influences financial performance. And we are going to look into different example research questions as well. It differs from traditional literature review in that it aims to synthesize and analyze the research in an unbiased, rigorous and systematic way so that it can be used to support evidence-based practice. Now, why is it unbiased? For example, we are conducting a study on the impact of corporate social responsibility on, let's say, financial performance. Now, normally, if we are conducting a research, maybe we are trying to find out the positive impact. Then we try to negate those studies or do not include those studies that have reported a negative relationship. Because this goes against what hypothesis I am going to propose in my study. And it is rigorous and systematic because it will include all those studies that are available in a particular time frame. Now, what are the characteristics of a systematic literature review? The scope of the review is established in advance. Now, you've got your research questions and then you've got a predetermined eligibility criteria. A systematic search is conducted in order to identify all the studies and resources that would meet the eligibility criteria. Now, you cannot exclude any studies that are actually meeting the eligibility criteria. The methodology used to search, assess, analyze and synthesize studies resources is explicit and reproducible. Now, no, like anybody around the world at any place can use your methodology and retrieve the same number of papers that you have. So it is reproducible. The review assesses the validity of the studies resources for a risk of a bias. So what you are doing is you are reviewing that will or the review will assess the validity of the studies resources for a risk of bias. So obviously once it is reproducible, anybody can review your work and see if there is a certain amount of bias in what you have done or not. The review uses explicit methods for extracting and synthesizing study findings. Obviously you can focus on either qualitative or quantitative research and it uses explicit methods, explicit strengths, explicit criteria to find the relevant studies. Why are systematic reviews important? A systematic review can generally give the most dependable answer to a specific research question and it can identify gaps in our knowledge that require further research. So a systematic review is actually an answer to a specific research question. 
and when you are, once you are trying to answer that research question maybe you will identify or definitely you will identify gaps in existing research it also communicates the strengths of the available evidence and the quality of included studies based on what methods they followed were their methods appropriate what were the weaknesses or gaps in the methodology followed this indicates how much confidence practitioners service users managers policy makers and the popular media should have in the results now if the methods are appropriate the analytical procedures used are appropriate then it will obviously have more confidence or the users will have more confidence in the findings traditional versus systematic literature review now the purpose of traditional literature review is to summarize and critique existing research in systematic literature review we conduct a structured and reproducible review the methodology is narrative based in systematic literature review it is predefined transparent methodology the search st strategy is selective so you select the studies based on the arguments that support your research problem now in systematic literature review it's more comprehensive well documented search now bias is high because obviously i want those studies to be included that support my argument in systematic literature review it is very low because you have to follow the inclusion and exclusion criteria replicability in traditional literature review is very low but in systematic literature review is very high this was the first session on understanding the basics of systematic literature review Thank you very much.